Welcome to Pleasant Green Sunday School. This is Lesson 12 for May the 21st, 2017. We're in Unit 3 entitled God's Pervasive and Sustaining Love. Our topic for today, taken from the Adult Quarterly, is a wake-up call. Our devotional reading comes out of the book of Acts, uh, chapter 11, verses 11 through 18. And our background scripture comes out of Jonah chapter 3, the book of Nahum, um, chapters 1 through 3. We'll be studying today uh, Jonah chapter 3, verses 1 through 10. Our key verse reads, When God saw what they did and how they turned from their evil ways, he relented and did not bring on them the destruction he had threatened. That's taken from Jonah chapter 3, uh, verse 10 from the NIV translation. Our lesson aims today, number one, is to explore how repentance is related to God's love. Number two, sense the joy that comes when forgiven for a wrong. And then the third aim is to share examples of times when wholeness and peace are the result of God's intervening love. We have three outlines today uh, from our adult quarterly lesson. Uh, the first outline is entitled, Jonah Received a Second Call from God. And then uh, second outline is Jonah's Preaching Received and the People Repented. And then the third outline is God's Response to Repentant Nineveh. We thank and praise God for this great opportunity to share this lesson with you. We have been uh, studying the book of Jonah. Uh, this is the third lesson that we have had from uh, Jonah's book. And I'm really thankful that we are studying this way um, uh, in terms of a whole book uh, that we can really uh, get into it a little uh, more than we ordinarily would with just one uh, particular chapter but we will conclude um, with all of Jonah's book parts of it uh, but today we are in the third chapter uh, verses 1 through 10 so we hope that you will study uh, the book of Jonah and we also hope that you will study the book of Nahum uh, we don't hear too much about him another minor prophet but he also prophesied uh, to Nineveh uh, in their destruction uh, which God uh, initially wanted to prevent uh, through the preaching of Jonah and so uh, we want to take a little bit from this biblical context and then we'll get into our lesson uh, the context of today's lesson reveals that God is the God of a second chance Jonah stood in the presence of a forgiving God and received the commission to preach to the city of Nineveh. Although he still harbored resentment from Israel's natural enemies, he nevertheless went. The message was simple yet profound. His sermon was not filled with the beauty of homiletics uh, and the ornateness of alliteration, rhyme, or parallelism. The message was just an eight-worded word from God to the people. Yet forty days and Nineveh shall be overthrown. Although simple, it was yet most effective. That comes out of Jonah chapter 3 verse 4. The context reveals that the very thing that Jonah feared came to pass. Fear came upon the people of Nineveh and they humbled themselves before God expressing godly sorrow as expressed by their sitting in dust or ashes. One lesson from the context is that while God's character and attributes are constant, 
he can choose to exercise his divine prerogatives to withhold impending wrath and extend marvelous mercies when sinners repent of their sins. When we started studying uh, the book of uh, Jonah, we began in the first chapter, and we started talking about at least two initial calls um, that I think are relevant to this book, uh, relevant to our lesson. Uh, one of the callings that we talked about was a special call or an assignment, uh, if you will, which pertained to Jonah. Um, in that he was called by God. The, the, the book starts off uh, helping us to understand that a word came to him, uh, to Jonah from God. And then, and then we talked about the, uh, the tone of that call and, and the specifics of what we call a special call or an assignment, if you will. Uh, and then the second call that is brought up in the book of, of uh, Jonah is a general call. Uh, that's one that we preach about uh, quite a bit today, the general call unto salvation. And that was the call that was initiated by God through Jonah to Nineveh. Uh, and so we want to keep in mind that there are two different callings here. Um, and so God intended for Nineveh to receive that general call uh, which is the same that we extend to individuals today who do not know the Lord Jesus and the pardon of their sins. And so our messages that we preach today uh, are initially twofold. Uh, and so God gives us an assignment or a message for his people. And then those individuals who do not know him uh, have an opportunity at the end of the message uh, uh, traditionally in our culture to respond to that message and we see that in um, uh, Jonah's case preaching to uh, Nineveh the people responded to God's call and their call was to re re repent and to be godly sorry uh, for their sins not so much a particular thing uh, that they were doing but their nature was sinful and God wanted to save them and to see them change uh, at the heart or at the root uh, of their sinful ways and so uh, repentance is very important so we're going to see that in this lesson today so we're going to begin with this first outline um, from Jonah chapter 3 verses 1 and 2 uh, Jonah received a second call from God. And I want to read this from the uh, NIV translation. Uh, the Bible says, Then the word of the Lord came to Jonah a second time. Go to the great city of Nineveh and proclaim to it the message I give you. Very important here. Uh, very important. Uh, 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 noteworthy points here uh, Jonah had if you know the story uh, he had rejected the call and and intended to uh, flee from the presence of the Lord and and you all know the story that he uh, uh, was thrown overboard and uh, from the ship that he was on and so uh, a great fish swallowed Jonah up and um, and so Jonah began to cry out to the Lord in, from inside the uh, belly of the fish. And, uh, and he began to uh, uh, think about the decision that he made. And so after the, uh, the three days, uh, the fish uh, vomited Jonah on dry land. And so uh, Jonah knew that he had to get about his father's business. And so that same assignment that God had initially given to him came to him a second time and the same geographical place that God wanted him to go also had not changed and also the message that God had given to Jonah had not changed uh, and so this is very important that we understand these things and and so when we start talking about God giving us a second chance or a second opportunity the assignments uh, uh, 
uh, are are the same. Uh, God intends to uh, uh, have this same message preached. It is a message of salvation. It is a message of repentance, and it's very important as ministers of God that we get our take uh, from the gospel uh, from our Lord and Savior uh, and how he wants us to present that. It's not about what we think we know and how much scripture we can quote uh, but it's about what God wants us to do uh, with that message and so this is where Jonah finds himself. The Lord's word came to Jonah a second time, inviting him as before to undertake the mission of mercy to Nineveh. So we do not have to read very far into the word of God to discover that God forgives his servants and restores them to ministry. Aren't you glad that he does? Uh, we do not know the exact place where the great fish deposited Jonah. You can see that in the second chapter of Jonah, verse 10. But we do know that wherever Jonah was, the Lord was there. Remember, God is more concerned about his workers than he is about their work. For if the workers are what they ought to be, the work will be what it ought to be. Uh, great sin and violence characterized Nineveh. They did not show any mercy for their enemies. They impaled live victims on sharp poles leaving them to roast to death in the desert sun they beheaded people by the thousands and stacked their skulls in piles uh, by the city gates and they even skinned people alive they respected neither age nor sex uh, and followed a policy of killing babies and young children so they would not have to care for them. I want you to look at the book of Nahum chapter 3 verse 10. So it was these wicked people of this city to whom God sent his servant assuring him that he would give him a message to speak. So God will never lead us to where the grace of God cannot keep us and the power of God cannot use us. So, and uh, the question is asked here, who is sufficient for these things? Our sufficiency is of God. I want you to look at 2 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 16, and 2 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 5. But I was looking at the types of things that, that uh, uh, the, 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 the people of Nineveh were engaged in. And as I said earlier, uh, all of these things... Uh, 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 we may say, well, we never did those things, but at the heart of uh, how we were born, we were born in a in a state of sin and wickedness. And so uh, it really doesn't matter uh, uh, to God the type of sin uh, that we are committing. God knows why we are sinning why we are committing the acts that we are committing and and when you look around the church today I want you to think about this the church is made up of a of a group of baptized believers and all of us have come from some place that we were very sinful and very destructive and a message came to us from God and now uh, uh, we sit back as though we have never done anything wrong but I like the fact that we can see here the concern of God not to destroy sinful people but to save sinful people keep in mind Jesus appeared for the very purpose of saving sinners he came into this world to deliver us from the penalty of sin and from the power of sin and so if we don't hide in the blood of Jesus Christ and in the power of Jesus Christ we will continue to be sinful just the way that we were born and so it is of the Holy Spirit now that we are kept and we are protected by the power of God according to Peter's epistle so I want us to keep these things in mind that Jonah is holding up the salvation process of all of these people. History says there was uh, some 120,000 people there uh, in Nineveh, but, but, but Jonah is blocking 
them from being saved because he is running from the purpose by which God brought him and kept him that he might preach this message and that's very important for you and I to understand today we were not saved for ourselves we are saved to be a blessing to other people and if you ever want to get God hot on your trail block the people that he intends to be saved and you will find yourself uh, in a state similar to Jonah until you accept the fact that God called you and equipped you to be a blessing in the lives of his people and so Jonah uh, is spared not only uh, uh, by God to to live but to do a work for God God is also sparing the nation of Nineveh by waking these sinful people up every day because he intends to save them so you see this kind of dual uh, purpose of God and this dual uh, uh, acts of mercy and grace for his prophet and also acts of mercy and grace for the people of Nineveh the question is asked here in the quarterly have you ever asked God for a second chance have you ever asked an employer an employer for a second chance and have you ever asked a friend or a relative for a second chance and have you ever granted a second chance to someone very important questions here so God is giving us an opportunity so you might say well why does God wake us up every day well he gives us an opportunity through new mercies and new grace for those of us that have not surrendered our lives uh, to Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior we need to understand that there's only one mediator between God and man and that is Jesus Christ so God extends this grace to us and wakes us up that we might have an opportunity to repent to become godly sorry for our sinfulness and seek the forgiveness that God has offered to us through Jesus Christ and through his sacrificial death and the blood that he shed on Calvary for our sins we need to get this in our minds that this is the only atoning sacrifice that we are going to get this is only this is the only propitiation that we are going to get for our sinfulness there won't be another savior there won't be another person to die for our sins the bible is clear if you read hebrews chapters 9 and 10 that jesus died once for all and his death was sufficient for all so we need to understand that today uh, second outline is entitled Jonah's preaching received and the people repented this is taken from Jonah chapter 3 uh, verses 3 through 9 again from the NIV translation uh, o uh, Jonah obeyed the word of the Lord and went to Nineveh now Nineveh was a very large city it took three days to go through it Jonah began by going a day's journey into the, into the city, proclaiming 40 more days and Nineveh will be overthrown. The Ninevites believed God. A fast was proclaimed, and all of them, uh, from the greatest to the least, put on a sackcloth. Verse 6, when Jonah's warning reached the king of Nineveh, he rose from his throne took off his royal robes covered himself with sackcloth and sat down in the dust this is the proclamation he issued in Nineveh but the decree of the king and his nobles do not let people or animals herds or flocks taste anything do not let them eat or drink um, but verse 8 says but let people and animals be covered with sackcloth let everyone call urgently on God let them give up their evil ways and their violence who knows God may relent and with compassion turn from his fierce anger so that we will not perish so let's unpack this uh, these verses that uh, we read we see the obedience you don't talk about that word too much these days that Jonah obeyed 
he obeyed the word that came from the Lord. He re uh, reckoned in his spirit that it was time to do what the Lord told him to do. He gets to the place, to Nineveh, and he says exactly uh, what God says for him to say. God had given them 40 days to get themselves together. How, do, how, how many days do we think God owes us? Uh, the scripture is clear in the book of Hebrews. The day you hear his voice, saith the Lord, hard not your heart. So God was going to give them 40 days in Nineveh to get their act together or they would be overthrown. And the Ninevites, uh, in verse 5, they believed. And so they began to, to go through this fast and they put on sackcloth. So this garment, uh, they put this on as a symbol uh, and a sign of repentance um, uh, made from animal skins that uh, God saw this act uh, that uh, these individuals uh, were repentant on the inside. And so even the king, uh, and I like this here, he took off his royal robe. Sometimes we think that that you know salvation is for other people it's for everybody it doesn't matter what your title is if you are a king if you are a prince and you have not confessed Jesus as your Lord and Savior do you know you can be lost do you know you can spend eternity out of the presence out of the sight of God did you know that that is a dangerous position to be in? So what we want to understand is that positions and titles uh, cannot keep us. Good morals will not keep you. Salvation is because we are sinful. And so the king recognized this word and he covered himself. And can you imagine that he took off his royal robes and put on a sackcloth and sat down in the dust realizing that he is nothing uh, and so this proclamation uh, uh, the king issued uh, that he didn't want anybody to eat anything he didn't want the animals to eat anything he didn't want them to to drink anything but he wanted all of the people and the animals to even be covered with a sackcloth uh, and so I like this here uh, that let everyone call urgently on God. Let them give up their evil ways and their violence. Do you know how dangerous it is for us to go to sleep at night and not have confessed Jesus as our Lord, as, our Lord, as your Lord and Savior? If the Lord should decide that he would come to get us today, to get us corporately or to get us individually today. Uh, if this was your last day, what state is your soul in? Uh, have you repented? Uh, have you taken this day to call on the name of the Lord in de out of desperation or in an urgent matter? We need to uh, take these things into account because God is looking at our sinfulness and God is concerned about the way we are living and how we are conducting ourselves uh, uh, we are his creation uh, all of these things that we see and that we go after all of these things belong to God and God is concerned and so Jonah was the vehicle by which uh, uh, God would use him to turn a whole city around and they did it uh, uh, and he only used the words that God gave him to use but the question is asked here who knows God may relent and with compassion turn from his fierce anger so that we will not perish I don't think we understand that our sin our sinfulness provokes God to anger and, and the way that happens is, and I'll give you some scripture, you can read Romans chapter 6, but what happens to us is that God gives us grace, and we take his grace and we use it the way we want to use it. We take his life 
that he has given us. We take his days and his time and we use it in the most sinful ways that we can use it. And then we expect to get more days for more sin. That is not why grace was given to us. And so Paul asked a rhetorical question in Romans chapter 6. He says, are we to continue in sin that grace may abound or grace may increase? Paul goes on to say, may it never be. And so this is how we frustrate and we provoke God to anger is because he gives us grace to live according to the commandments that we have given have been given by him but we choose to lose, to lead our lives in sinful ways that provoke him to anger and that causes us to perish keep that in mind i won't read all of the commentary that 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 uh, goes along with these verses but uh it is uh how we sound uh that matters it is the substance uh, faith comes by hearing and hearing uh, by the word of God. So the, the, the masses of Nineveh believed God when we obey God and share his transforming message with others. It brings not only deliverance for us, but also great blessings for others. And then so, yes, it does matter uh, what we say and how we say uh, what we say to God's people it matters how we present the gospel of Jesus Christ uh, to individuals so men need to preach the gospel uh, the people need to hear the gospel and believe on the gospel so they can call on Jesus and thus be saved that is the process of salvation and so if we are going to be saved today there must be a word uh, from the Lord. But a little bit of commentary here that I want to read. And it just says, just think of what America would be like if revival reached the White House and trickled down to all cities and townships. And this is the part where we have to be careful uh, in terms of, 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 of uh, who we are and where we are that we're going to live in a manner that that does not please God and then we expect God to take what we give him and so when God begins to react uh, and, and this is why I said earlier when you read the story of Jonah you also uh, there are four chapters and I believe three chapters in the book of Nahum you need to read all of that because Nineveh was ultimately destroyed uh, under the prophet Nahum because they went backwards. They went back into the sinful ways and God ultimately uh, destroyed them. And so uh, we have to be careful that God is not a, a, a part-time savior. Uh, and I know that's kind of how we've used him and uh, that's how I did uh, for a lot of years of my life. Uh, I, I I went to church and did all of the, the Christian things and after church service was over then I did my thing. You know, and so uh, that led me to a place where I got sick and uh, and began to call on the Lord uh, and, and repent of my sins. I had to give up that attitude and mindset of straddling the fence. And so we have to be careful with that. But the question is asked here in the, in the quarterly, why do you think today's revivals differ from the revival at Nineveh? Sometimes we don't talk about our conduct when we get together it is a great celebration uh, and so usually historically if we're going to have a revival uh, that means uh, technically that we have had a period of decline uh, and, and so uh, we want to get back into uh, the position that we uh, should be in as Christians and one of the ways we do that we have to repent uh, there's no way around that even when as Christians today when we do things wrong and we commit sin as Christians how do we repair uh, the fellowship uh, we have broken it uh, through our sin uh, the first epistle of John chapter 1 will tell you how to restore it 
And so through confession and through repentance, we're able to uh, restore the brokenness uh, that is between God and the believer through repentance and confessing our sins. And then uh, uh, John tells us, the first epistle of John chapter 1, that God is faithful and just to forgive us of our sins and then to cleanse us, uh, uh, not just from some unrighteousness, but all of it. And so uh, uh, that's the purpose of repentance. And that is the role that it plays in the life of a sinner as well as in the life of a believer. And so our last outline is entitled God's Response to Repentant Nineveh. This is Jonah chapter 3 verse 10. Again from the NIV translation, when God saw what they did and how they turned from their evil ways, he relented and did not bring on them the destruction he had threatened. I hope we understand that uh, I think Peter puts it this way that if the righteous are scarcely saved one translation says barely where shall the sinner and the ungodly appear you know and so we are just scarcely saved uh, uh, God could have wiped us out uh, because of our sinfulness he did not have to spare us but he did and so and so what we can do now is is what Romans chapter 12 uh, verse 1 and 2 tells us that, that we present our bodies as living sacrifices, holy and acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. And so we have to move ahead now and be transformed by the renewing of our mind because we understand that God does not have to tolerate our foolishness and our sinfulness. He does it because he loves us and he does it because he has sent a word. Don't you see the, the uh, amount of the gospel that is preached worldwide? And that I believe that people are hearing that gospel all over the world. And as sure as so many are dying, there are so many that are accepting Jesus Christ as the Lord and Savior. And this is why God spares us and gives us another opportunity. He did it for Jonah. And he's doing it for Nineveh. But at some point, God spoke to Jonah and told him that he had accepted the people's repentance and would not destroy the city. The phrase God repented is translated, he relented in the NIV. That is, he changed his course. From the human point of view, it looked like God went back on his word. But from the divine perspective it was simply God's response to the people's change of heart how deep was the spiritual experience of the people of Nineveh if repentance and faith are the basic conditions of salvation then we have reason to believe that they were accepted by God the the people of Nineveh repented and had faith in God the fact that Jesus used the Ninevites example to shame the unbelieving Jews of his day is further evidence that their response to Jonah's ministry was sincere. I want you to look at Matthew chapter 12 verses 38 through 41 and then we serve the great God who is able to forgive and deliver. When we truly repent of our wickedness God delivers us from judgment. God is merciful toward those who confess their sins and call on him to change their hearts. This message is for per pervasive in the book of Jonah and we should be exceedingly glad that God uh, that as God forgave Jonah and the people of Nineveh uh, he also forgives us and I gave you first epistle of John chapter 1 uh, verse 9 but I was thinking about and I want to share this with you I want you to think about how God treats you uh, how he demonstrates his love in your life uh, how faithful he has been in your life how good he has been to you uh, uh, you know I recognize that God didn't treat me the way I deserved for my sinfulness but with loving kindness he drew me to him and that's how he has drawn you to him uh, and so he has 
washed away our sinfulness and forgotten about our past and and uh, and allows a new day a new opportunity full of new mercies and and new grace and so aren't you thankful th- for that chance for that opportunity that God chose you and that he spared you and that he he turned you around the songwriter say he picked me up and he turned me around and he placed my feet on solid ground and so uh, we we see these things happening to us and so uh, out of all of this sinfulness of Nineveh that we read about earlier God put it away and said I'm going to give you another chance after all of the people you've killed and all of the babies that I gave you as fruit uh, uh, that you killed I'm willing to forgive you and I'm willing to let it go and start anew I'm willing to give you a chance if you would just repent of your sins it this is this is loving kindness beyond anything that I can comprehend or explain it's beyond what what we can understand about God when he tells you that he loves you we can't comprehend the depth of that uh and so that's what we see in this lesson this is profound love that God is saying I'll forget about all of that but I want you to stop your sinfulness and commit to doing things the way I am instructing you as opposed to the way you want to live your life and so we have uh, we have a great opportunity today a opportunity of a lifetime to forever be with God in his presence but the thing is Jesus said it in the third chapter of the book of John you must be born again you must be born again of the spirit of the Holy Spirit and of the word of God Jesus says these words in the 14th chapter of John no man comes to the father but by me we cannot get to the Father without going through Jesus Christ, through the sacrificial death. We cannot get to heaven without Jesus Christ. We cannot make it without Jesus Christ. We cannot have our sins atoned for uh, except we come through Jesus Christ. Do you get the point? Uh, there is no other name given among men by which we must be saved. So we have to understand these principles here. And Jonah's story is very connected to the story of Jesus and the, and what we understand about him coming into this world. So I hope, trust, and pray that you will read again the story of Jonah and also the story of, of, uh, of the prophet Nahum and read the opportunity that they they accepted Jesus Christ. They accepted the word of God uh, uh, through Jonah. But then they went backward and not forward. And that same God that spared them had to come back and judge them because they did not stay the course. It's very important that we stay the course um uh, that has been set before us. It's, it's, it's very important not that not just that we have faith, but that we keep the faith. And so that's very important today. This is a beautiful lesson for us to understand. But we want to read this closing prayer. Thank you, Lord, that when you were living in our personalized Nineveh, when we were living in our personalized Nineveh, with sin within us, around us, beneath us, and before us, and behind us. You cared enough to send your very best to reclaim us and to forgive us for our wrongs. Now we ask you to give us the courage to share the good news of forgiveness. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So again, we thank and praise God for this great lesson. And we hope that you have uh, been encouraged by it. We hope that uh, we have said something to encourage your heart today. And let me just say this as I close. 
if you have not accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior I encourage you to do that right now today where you are and when you do that I want you to read Romans chapter 10 verse 8 9 and 10 and accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior don't let another day go by without having Jesus as the captain of your ship don't try to live this life and certainly the one that is to come without Jesus Christ as the songwriters say you're going to need him everywhere you go so until such time that the Lord will permit us to come together again we say God bless you